Hi, my name is Eric. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about a subject in which I feel needs to be brought to the public immediately. Um, I'm very familiar with all of these synthetic drugs, so to speak, and uh, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know uh, all the statistics that they bring up and things like the Poison Control Center log and, and things of that nature and, and people who have had uh, family members neg negatively affected by uh, the ingestion of these synthetic drugs. And frankly, it's getting me sick. The reason why these people are ending up in hospitals is because they don't understand the concept of drug agonists. Basically, these synthetic drugs have higher affinities for the receptors in your brain that drugs that we already know the long-term effects of, drugs that we know, if made legal, would be much safer on the consumer. But unfortunately, we don't even have the ability to see how much of these synthetic agonists are inside of our products. For instance, K2. Um, it's a product in which has a synthetic cannabinoid agonist. And this synthetic cannabinoid agonist basically mim mimic the effects of uh, the natural cannabinoid agonist which is found in cannabis sativa and cannabis indica and very, very minimal amounts in cannabis root routes. Um, it mimics these effects because it binds to the same receptors in your brain. What people don't understand is that the only niche that are inside of these potpourri blends, these herbal incense blends, are just a couple of different factors. Number one, your key component is visual appeal. All of these people putting together these, these uh, synthetic pop blends in their backyards and doing nothing more than going on the internet, looking up some zip seal packages, getting some cheap label maker, and uh, putting together their own little product. Number two is that they feel like their product needs to be the most potent. And this is where hospitalizations and things like that come into play. You feel like you have an entire market of, of manufacturers and which feel like their product has to be the most potent. And relative to K2, has to be the strongest. So they'll dump this on there. And because there's no regulation upon these products, no way for the consumer to safely know whether or not their product contains the right amount of synthetic cannabinoid, the wrong amount, or the huge amount in which causes the hospitalizations, well, you have an industry basically allowing itself to adapt and evolve without the consumer's health at best interest. These manufacturers just dump these chemicals, I mean dump these chemicals on these products. And then you have kids that don't understand even what regular delta 9 tetrahydrocannabinol can do to their brain, smoking the hell out of this stuff. It super saturates their, super saturates their receptors, causes this elevated heart rate, causes you, I mean, uh, this, this high anxiety. And the only thing they can think of is, I don't know what's going to happen. I have no preconceived notion or understanding about what really could happen if I overdosed on this drug. And you have people who just don't understand that it's just a drug, and it just goes away. And they take their lives. Why? Because there's no regulation. People need to understand that if people want to use substances, they're going to use substances anyway. Why not make the chemicals and products that we already have been around for hundreds of years? For instance, marijuana has been used for over 3,000 years. And this is talking about recorded history. The oldest paper in history comes from a Chinese text in which is dated all the way back to 770 AD in pristine condition because it was made on a product in which cannabis can produce. Let me just go on and say the reason why all these people are in hospitals, the reason why all these people are taking their lives is because they don't understand the negative repercussions of using something they don't understand the long-term effects of. And they don't care. Frankly, their um, mindset is to just do it legally. Because if they don't, they go to jail. But if they do the illegal, safe versions of these drugs, uh, the ones that we know the history of, we know um, after being said and done hundreds of experiments on each of these drugs, in which always come back concluding that they're much safer and that we always are going to know the long-term effects of it, they do these bad ones. All I can say is legalize, do the right thing, and this whole synthetic drug market goes away. For things like synthetic cocaine, bath salts, and stuff like that, all you basically need is an institution where people have the ability themselves to go and do these drugs safely. Because you're always going to have two pools of people in which you use drugs. There's going to be the pool of people who use them 
um, without complicating any other obligations, basically not allowing it to prioritize over what's really important. And then you're going to have the junkies. The junkies want to get high, and that's all they want to do. They don't care if they get an STD, and they frankly don't care if they never do anything with their lives. But just because there's these guys out there doesn't mean you should neglect these guys. You know, If you had an institution where people had the ability to go and use drugs in a safe fashion, uh, and under strict supervision of someone who really understands the negative side effects of using the drug and can produce um, basically a high which is conducive to long-term safe health, why not? You know, the same way concurrent with prostitution, you know. If you're going to have um, a group of people who run the similar constructs of the ones I explained earlier, you're basically going to have the group of people who don't care if they get an STD, but they're going to have the group of people who do care about they're having an STD. I mean, frankly, think about this. You know, it's going to cost us money, ladies, to have sex with you. I mean, whether you want to talk about being in love or whether you want to talk about having a cheap little one-night stand, we're going to have to pay for dinner, we're going to have to pay for your drinks at the club, and, and, and everything runs concurrent from there. So, if you're a strict businessman uh, with strong obligations and commitments in which deem you unable to find a woman like that and have that experience with that woman in an effort to finally get in her pants, well then, <laughs> why not just go find a prostitute? Why? Because if you do, you get an STD. And there's always going to be that, that, that risk out there. Now, why not provide an institution where this businessman can go at his own time Okay, and be able to pay for sex by someone who's certified to not have an STD. A person that's certified to be really good in bed. A person who's certified to be safe. I rest my case. You can cling to as much moral fervor as you want, fanatical successors, any things like that. And you can still be practicing the same stupid standards of morality in which deem you unable to realize that there could be a safe way to use drugs. So be it. But for the people who want to change, subscribe to my channel. You know, I got a lot of stuff to say. I got a lot of time to say it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, enlightening the people of the world. The same kind of stuff I enlighten myself with. Uh, with my group of friends. Because frankly, all we want to do is free our mind. So subscribe. Hope you enjoy it.